Welcome to the DC Daily Drop, your one-stop shop for today's important news in DC movies, TV, and comics. Here are your hosts, Tom and Zach. Hello and welcome to a special edition of the DC Daily Drop. Today we are going to be talking about and reviewing Batman, the 1966 film. Uh, In honor of Batman Return of the Cape Crusaders, debuting in theaters on October 10th for one night only, we are sort of trying to catch everyone up to speed who might have missed this classic movie. Um, Zach, for people who have never seen this movie before, how would you describe it? Um, Before we start, I do want to put out a warning. There will be spoilers in this review. Oh, yes. There will be major plot spoilers, so you you will know what happens in this movie by the time we're done. The the good news is a it's fifty years old yeah and b the plot is not the point of this movie right um <laughs> so yeah if you if you have never seen this movie um you probably have seen clips or at least know about the TV show and how campy it was and goofy and you know like they're punching people and there's a big yellow text on the screen that says bam or whiff and how yeah and Robin is always saying holy conundrum or holy applesauce batman or something weird (laughs) that's what this gosh batman right that's what this movie is this is the most over the top most campy funny not supposed to be serious version of batman you can probably ever find in a theatrical film other than maybe other than maybe batman and robin yeah but we won't bring that up today (laughs) um so yeah it's interesting this Batman so this was this film was released on July 30th 1966 by 20th Century Fox. There was a TV show airing at the time. This actually went on between seasons 1 and 2 and Batman was incredibly popular during season 1 and lots of people liked it and uh this movie was, you know, it was made on a budget of 1.5 million and it's not exactly the highest quality but it is pretty good for its age actually and it's it it looks a little better than the tv series it sort of um sort of hits all the highlights of the tv series and includes all the classic villains um but this is this is a show that for a lot of people was people didn't like for a long time because batman's not supposed to be campy batman's not supposed to be a joke he's not supposed to be telling jokes or you know it's supposed to be serious and everything but now that tim burton's Batman has been out there and especially Christopher Nolan's Batman people have gone back and sort of respect this show now for what it is as Mm -hmm. a goofy funny uh awesome time yeah right (laughs) it's only it's almost a parody of itself which is funny like there isn't any other superhero show or movie that does that that I know right the good news is it's supposed to be funny you know and we're supposed to be they at least know exactly what they're trying to be, and they do pretty well with that. So the sort of the main cast is Adam West as Bruce Wayne slash Batman. Burt Ward is Dick Grayson, a.k.a. Robin. Lee Merriweather is the cat man, Catwoman in this version. Um, Julie Newmar played her in the, uh, in the TV series up to that point, but I think it was a scheduling conflict that she couldn't do. Um, Cesar Romero as Joker and... Mustache included, white paint over top of the mustache. Uh, Burgess Meredith, who a lot of people might know from the Rocky movies, he plays Penguin, and Frank Ro- Frank Gorshin as the Riddler is the main cast to it. Mm-hmm. So, what do you have to say about this film, Zach? Um, there is a lot of funny stuff that happens in this movie. There's a lot of times that I actually laughed out loud, which. You say that about a lot of stuff, but it doesn't actually happen all that often. And there, <laughs> there was just moments when I was literally laughing out loud. Um, it's, this was your your first time watching it recently, right? This, yeah, this yeah. is the very first time I've ever watched this I, movie. Yeah, I rewatched it. I'd watched it once uh, a year or two ago. By the way, this is out. It's on Netflix right now. And there's also a Blu-ray of it that has been released. And that's actually... It's amazing to see it in 1080p detail that they never meant for anyone to ever see it in. <laughs> right. That's what. That's uh, why you can see Cesar Romero's mustache under the paint. Yeah. Yeah. It probably wasn't as uh, obvious in when people were watching this in the 60s, but it is now. That uh, Blu-ray also has a funny commentary from Adam West and Burt Ward. So if you're looking to get something, that's worth checking out. But Yeah. There is a, I don't know, 
I have a huge list of things I just wrote down that were super funny. I don't know, we probably won't cover them all, but one of one of the things that keeps happening in the movie is like everything is labeled. Yes. <laughs> He's like, okay, he the bat ladder comes out of in the beginning, the bat ladder comes out of the bat copter and it has just a little placard at the bottom that says bat ladder. <laughs> it doesn't need that. <laughs> Yes, it does. <laughs> Who's gonna? <laughs> how would you, how would you know what it was without reading that? And you might. That's act- one of the. <laughs> that's one of the funniest recurring things going on through there is, and some of the things that are labeled, everything is labeled, and some of the things that are labeled are just so ridiculously funny, and uh, it's really nice to see. Even like right at the beginning, Batman and Robin are going down the slide to the Batcave, and we see, you know, it's what is it the Bat costume change lever or right. something like that so they just they just touch that and apparently they get out of their normal clothes and get into their costumes by the time they're at the bottom of the pole the thing i didn't understand about that lever was is there ever a time that they're going down that pole that they don't need the their costume i feel like it should be a lever they pull if they don't need the costume because they have to do it every single time you know what <laughs> i don't like how hard you're thinking about this <laughs> I'm this is not this is not meant to have deep thought put into it. <laughs> well, with that in mind, then there, this is a really fun movie. Um, there's um, one of the great things. So when he's on that bat ladder, going back to that, <laughs> this is when the rubber shark grabs onto his leg, and he's punching this rubber shark. And it's just funny that, like, for 1966, this was actually a pretty cool looking shot. Like, there's a real guy hanging from a real helicopter, flying over a real body of water. Right. But then they throw in a rubber shark <laughs> and just yeah. kind of ruins the whole thing. Just a completely ridiculous rubber shark that is gnawing on Batman's leg for several minutes and doesn't even seem to bother him. He's got the weakest teeth. Right. And then he punches it and it falls in the water and it blows up. No, he uses bat shark repellent spray. Oh, that's right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just you can't just punch a shark like that. You need a special spray well, to spray on it. Luckily, they had like six canisters of that in the back copter at all times. Right, yeah, something you always got to carry with you. Right. I'm surprised it wasn't on his utility belt. To be honest with you. Yeah. And so they they don't know who the bad people are at this point, and they're talking to the commissioner, and <laughs> basically they figure it out using puns, the power of puns. <laughs> they're like. Something pretty fishy happened to me. That must be Penguin. And then Robin says, C, as in C for Catwoman, because they were out at sea. (laughs) They were out at sea. That means Catwoman's involved. (laughs) This is perfectly logical. I don't don't get your problem. (laughs) And it all all adds up to a sinister riddle. So obviously the Riddler is involved. Uh, Obviously. So they figure out that it's Penguin, Catwoman, Joker, and the Riddler. And they're all hanging out at the united underworld which is a room above a club and it's just this room where everybody has their own bookcase yeah that (laughs) that was the best part private (laughs) it's this big open bookcase with like a fish tank on it for penguin and some question marks for riddler the joke section for joker private keep out i don't know if you notice this too but there's like a there's just a bunch of really weird random labeled stuff again with all the labeling but there's a filing cabinet for confetti, and it's like separated by colors of confetti in the back of there. <laughs> just, just because. I bet, I bet if you went through this like frame by frame, you would see so many hilarious things that have been missed with labels and everything like that. Yeah. Um. So, one of the times that Batman is there's like five different times that they're getting torpedo shot at them, and <laughs> so they they like go out and find out that the boat was a mirage made by lasers on a buoy and so they're like they're standing on the buoy and they shoot torpedoes at him and he has enough battery juice in his transmitter to jam the signal for two of them and then the third one it cuts away and there's an explosion and you don't see what happens and they come back (laughs) and robin says it was noble of that porpoise to hurl his way in the path of the torpedo (laughs) he gave his life for ours so I don't, very noble i don't know if they had it maybe they didn't have it in the budget to to have another rubber fish jump in the way of a torpedo and show that but they didn't show it probably not that rubber shark looked pretty expensive so yeah and so 
uh, they call they call the Pentagon and there's just people sitting around all day waiting for Batman to call the Pentagon to figure out that the boat is registered to a PN Gwyn, which maybe you should use a better name. With no, no, he just has a PO box, no address. Right. So Batman, Batman scolds the Pentagon. Like if you're going to be selling surplus submarines and boats to bad people, you should probably at least get their real address. Right. That's a, that's another recurring thing. The military and the police force are just completely incompetent <laughs> and just wait around for Batman to solve all their problems for them. Yep. And then, of course, the Riddler is involved. So he shoots a Polaris missile and perfectly writes a riddle in the sky that <laughs> that somehow doesn't really make sense, but makes sense to Batman and Robin and tells them the evil plan that they are going to do. Like... <sighs> I don't remember what it was, but the answer was that somebody Russian is going to slip on a banana pill, peel, and break their neck. <laughs> and they say, yes, that's the only possible answer. Uh, clearly. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the evil plan they come up with is they're going to they're gonna kidnap Bruce Wayne. So they're going to kidnap Bruce Wayne to get Batman to come to them. So obviously there may be a problem with that plan. Right. But Catwoman is the one. She's going to pretend to be a reporter from Russia miss kitka and that's how that's how they're gonna get bruce wayne and they're gonna kidnap him and my favorite part from that is she like needs to contact the other bad people and so she pulls out a little cat transmitter <laughs> that flashes and like does morse code with meows on the other side like meows yeah. code i guess you would call it <laughs> there's some good technology throughout this movie yeah Bat batman's got a car phone and i think he had one in the the bat boat yeah so he's he's cutting it. He's was cutting edge even back in the sixties. Yeah. So so Alfred and Robin are like following him around to make sure he doesn't nothing happens to him. But they turn it off because Bruce Wayne and Miss Kitka start making out, and that's when he gets kidnapped. Um, something I did notice though is that Bruce Wayne did a pretty good job of fighting off those kidnappers. So I don't know. If yeah, he's it, he's very talented. If Batman ever needs some help, some outside help from a civilian, he should probably call Bruce Wayne. All the all the villains too aren't very good fighters. No, that exactly. There's <laughs> there's a part where he's like fighting all the main villains. I think this is after he got kidnapped and he's still Bruce Wayne. And some random guy jump runs in who's just wearing like jeans and a black sweater. I'm like, <laughs> who is that guy? And he that's the guy that he like hits a spring and fall flies out into the ocean and explodes. <laughs> So all of these people are really terrible at fighting. Poor guy. By the way, did you notice the part? Even even in the most family friendly version of Batman, they thought he thought that they took Miss Kitka and he said he was going to kill all of them yep. if they harmed her. And he said he would rip them limb from limb. Yeah. As Bruce Wayne. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> he's there's those those sinister undertones in Bruce Wayne. There's oh, yeah. a crack in the psyche. Yeah. Um something I did notice, like Obviously, this movie is supposed to be funny and goofy and campy, but like underneath it, Cesar Romero as Joker, there really is something creepy about him that like <laughs> underneath as stupid as this movie is supposed to be like, he really is a pretty, ke pretty creepy villain. I would not want to run into Cesar Romero in a dark alley right. in that yeah. makeup. <laughs> yeah, he does a very good job. I think all of them do a really good job with what they're asked to do, too. Mm -hmm. So... Bruce Wayne escapes and the penguin reveals, or I think Riddler, I don't know. One of them has the dehydrator gun <laughs> and they dehydrate five pirates they're going to take with them. Um, but we come to, uh, there's this fame, the famous scene in the movie where they're climbing up the wall that you probably see a lot of times and you see a lot of people. Yeah, make it was, I think it was on the intro to the TV show. Right. So it's just the camera turned sideways and then walking. Yeah. <laughs> And this this is where your favorite part happens, where they're in the bar and Robin talks about. Oh yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they basically have the PSA where Robin just can't believe that people would would drink alcohol, and he just he just can't stand them at all. But Batman, uh, yeah. So they basically include a PSA in the middle there of anti drinking. Right, and <laughs> Batman says something, or Robin says something like, "Why would you save those people? Because they." Well, first of all, there's a big giant bomb. Yeah. And Why would anybody drink? I can't imagine somebody not wanting to have their wits about them. Right. But, okay, so there's this giant bomb 
that Batman has to pick up and run around and like with he, the longest fuse ever. <laughs> he keeps running into like groups of nuns and babies and ducks and <laughs> oh, I can't throw the bomb there. And then <laughs> there's like a random three piece band just walking around playing music for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where that's where he says, "Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb." <laughs> The classic meme right there. Which Some is, days you just can't get rid of a bomb. That's what I, I try to live my life by that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so and then, so he, he whatever, he saves everybody by getting rid of the bomb. And Robin says, why would you risk your life to save a bunch of lousy drinkers or something like that? <laughs> and Batman says, they may be drinkers, but they're still human beings. So. <laughs> I, there's so many great quotes in this. I wish I had written some down, but there's some just hilarious lines yeah so after this penguin gets his way into the bat cave with the dehydrated pirates and he says he needs a drink of water and batman says go over to the water dispenser it's clearly marked (laughs) as is everything else in the bat cave (laughs) it's very welcoming for visitors yeah so and he accidentally rehydrates it with heavy water which turns them into antimatter which I was, like, surprised when I heard this. Like, I didn't know people were talking about this in the 1960s. I thought that was, like, a relatively new thing that people yeah. talked about in popular and pop culture. But it was cool to hear that. It might have been at the time that they had no idea what it was and just threw in any scientific terms they could think of. Yeah. <laughs> but but we should give them more credit than that. I'm sure they knew what they were doing. Yeah. And so the the bad guys of the Rogue Gallery, their their idea is... They're going to go to, it's not the United Nations, what do they call it? It's like their version of the United Nations. United. United World. United Assembly, United World Assembly, I I don't know. So, yeah, their big master plan is they're going to dehydrate the Security Council. And so they do that. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, And then, so Batman and Robin track them down to their submarine, the Penguin sub, which every time they show it is just like, you can really, it's really easy to tell that it's just a toy floating underwater (laughs) which is great so they track them down and they shoot them with like a bat gun and the special effects there's just like flashes of color on top of it without any explosions or anything um and they fight them all and they they get to the dust and they break it and all the dust gets mingled together and so it leads to this great shot of them this is probably i think i started laughing the hardest when this happened is they cut to the bat cave and they're like standing there with their costumes on with aprons and goggles over it like <laughs> stand, standing in front of this machine labeled science class is now in session <laughs> right and standing in front of this machine labeled super molecular dust separator that they happen to have <laughs> sitting in the bat cave <laughs> do you think batman has like a special label maker well, he has to, to always always be prepared he has a bat label maker that is labeled a bat label maker no, oh, that's the only possible solution. I don't know how he made that label, though. So that's kind of a chicken and egg problem. So anyways, but so they they rehydrate the Security Council and... Yeah, it's for the United World Organization, their right. Security Council. That's what it was. Thank you for fact-checking me, Tom. Um, <laughs> but the actual accuracy is important in this review. Exactly. So they rehydrate the Security Council, but their brains are all switched, so they're all speaking different languages and... Maybe that's a good thing. They don't know. And that's the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah. How about that? This is totally ridiculous, but it is a lot of fun to watch. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. It was It was a lot of fun to watch. Um, you have to, if you can get past trying to think that it's a serious movie, because if you think it's a serious movie, something wrong with you, because it's <laughs> the least serious movie you could watch um so yeah if you can get past that this is such a fun movie um it's a movie where you get to see all of batman's greatest villains together working together um and like you said there's a ton of quotables great one-liners great little like running gags throughout the whole movie yeah the most the most important thing is before people would watch batman and return of the crepe crusaders i don't think they would need to worry about the plot from this i think that might help them enjoy it more if they if they fully watch it but you just need to know what you're getting into if you're if you're expecting a serious movie like you said this isn't it <laughs> if you're expecting a ridiculously weird and campy and good time then this is the right place yeah so i'm looking forward to seeing uh, return of the cape crusaders i 
I'm wondering if they'll make some like some little jokes or in jokes or whatever um, references to this movie. I think they will mm. uh, for sure for all the hardcore fans for, for the movie and the TV series. And, you know, we even saw in the, what little footage we've seen so far, we've seen plenty of giant labels. Yeah. <laughs> right. The oven from the, the first teaser. So I know we're going to be seeing some of that. And I think what I'm hoping, you know, we'll sort of see a modern version of what this was in the 60s. That makes more sense for today's audience. Yeah. But still has the feel and spirit of the 60s series. Yeah. And it's it's perfect that they're doing it as an animated movie because then they can get the original stars to do the voices. So Yeah, it's it's too bad, you know. Cesar Romero and and Burgess Meredith and Frank Gorshin are all gone, but they're gonna have Adam West, who is just perfect for what they're asking to do out of Batman yeah. in this, and Burt Ward is Robin and um Julie Newmar will be back as Catwoman from the, the T V series. And so, you know, I but yeah, we should talk more about Adam West. What do you think about his performance overall? Uh, he he is a great straight man in comedy. So he yeah. like he can be saying the most ridiculous thing and say it with a straight face. There's a at the end when they're rehydrating the security council. It's like this ridiculous setup where there's just piles of dust, and he <laughs> he has like a, he's holding a garden ho- hose and he says. <laughs> A solemn moment, gentlemen. And he says it with the, the like most serious tone and straight face, and it's great. He, he is great how he's able to, to pull that off and totally believable. And I got to say, for the time, he looks a, a lot like Bruce Wayne, maybe more so than anybody up until Ben Affleck. When you take away, you know, his build, he's not necessarily built like Batman, but he does have the, the look of Bruce Wayne. Yeah. down i think he's six two he's got good size he he looks like you would think bruce wayne would look like in that day yeah i was gonna i was gonna say that when he is in character as bruce wayne he is a really suave good looking bruce wayne so yeah he's miss kitka he thinks at least he, he works on her but <laughs> yeah he's um he's just a joy to watch and I'm, I'm glad he's gonna be back for the animated movie and and we get to see more of him yeah uh any other closing thoughts about this movie um, other than it's, this is a great fun movie. Um, you don't need to be any rush to watch it. It's not going to mess with your continuity of any sort of universe or storyline or anything. So this is, this is a great movie. You can just come back and like throw on, on the background in the weekend or something just for some laughs or to see something cool and funny. So it's perfect for yeah, that. Yeah. And I, I think if you can watch it before you watch Return of the Cape Crusaders, there might be some in jokes that you'd like to see more, but if not, you just really need to know what you're getting in for um, sort of with the, t- the tone and everything uh, plot will not be a priority, but yeah. So Batman return of the Cape Crusaders comes out Monday, October 10th in fathom events theaters. Uh, you can check them out at fathom events.com and it'll be released October 11th on digital and November 1st for Blu-ray and DVDs. All right. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for listening, and make sure to check out DC Daily Drop on Twitter, Facebook, and dcdailydrop.com. Drop by tomorrow for more DC news.